my story today is called West Coast Wild, a Nature Alphabet. And it's by Deborah Hodge with really beautiful illustrations by Karen Rexick. Now, thinking about the West Coast, that is definitely a way to describe where I live in Southern California. I'm only maybe about 20 or 30 minutes from the ocean. A coastline is where land meets the sea. So that are, can mean anywhere on earth where an ocean touches land. But the West Coast that we're referring to for this book is the West Coast of North America. So anywhere where ocean touches the coast of that entire sweep from Mexico up through California, up through Oregon, and Washington, the Canadian provinces of British Columbia and the Yukon and all the way up through Alaska. So that is a big, big stretch of coastline. And they're all joined together by touching the Pacific Ocean, the biggest ocean in the world. There might be a coastline near where you live that touches a different ocean or maybe a different body of water like a lake. There are lots of coastlines, but it's usually pretty sure that wherever water touches land, there will be a lot of wildlife to be found. <laughs> so I'm going to get started. Oh, I forgot something. There's something else about the title of this book, A Nature Alphabet. I like this book a lot because it's organized plants and animals by letters of the English alphabet. Letters that are used in many other languages too, from A to Z. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. So we're going to find out about a plant, an animal, or a feature of the West Coast for every one of those letters. Should we begin? Ooh, the inside cover is definitely very coastal. Do you see those sort of ocean spray, sea foam coming up on the sand? I see some kelp washed up on shore. I see some rocks and shells. We're definitely on the coast. West Coast Wild. Do you recognize these things? I see a limpet shell and a pine cone. Very land and sea. There's our coastline. We can see the ocean and that spit of land right there. The ocean touching the land. Let's begin. There is a wild and beautiful place where an ancient rainforest meets the ocean, where whales swim and eagles soar. Waves splash up on a windswept beach and sea and sky go on forever. Would you like to visit this special place? Come and explore the Pacific West Coast. Discover some treasures of land and sea by turning the pages of this A, B, C. It looks like we're inside of a rainforest. Very, very green and lush. I see a little person exploring. Maybe we can pretend that's us. A is for an ancient forest that towers over a long sandy beach. Heavy rain falls in this rainforest and turns the trees into giants. Some are 800 years old, 800 year old trees. Imagine what they've lived through, oh my goodness. Do you recognize this animal on the beach? It's a bear. B is for bears that den in the rainforest. At low tide, a hungry black bear ambles down to the beach and flips over rocks to find tasty crabs to eat. This bear is going crabbing. Do you like to eat crab? Have you ever tried crab? If you have, you share a snack in common with a bear. C is for cougars that prowl at dusk and dawn. In the dim light, a big cat pads silently across the sand, hunting for raccoons, deer, seals, and other prey. That's a big cougar. These beautiful cats are also known by the names puma or mountain lion. They live all over North America, not just only on the West Coast, all the way over to the East Coast and down into uh, Central America as well. They're very adaptable. We can find them here in Los Angeles where I live too. 
D, D, I see a crab. I wonder why the letter is D. Crab usually starts with a C. Hmm, let's find out. D is for Dungeness crabs, a type of crab that scurry along the ocean floor. As a crab grows, it sheds its shell and forms a bigger one. Beachcombers often spot the old shells. So our crab grows out of smaller shells into bigger ones as it grows up. It leaves those old smaller shells behind. Maybe you've seen a shell like this washed up on the beach before. It means that there's a crab growing up nearby. Oh, we're back up high in the sky. E is for eagles that soar overhead. Bald eagles nest in the tall trees of the ancient rainforest. Soon, these eaglets will grow longer feathers and learn how to fly. Eaglets is a very cool word for baby eagles. Eaglets. Do you see the eaglets? Can you see how many there are? I see two. One, two. They'll grow longer feathers soon and be able to fly just like their parents. We are back under the ocean again. F is for fish that glide through cool ocean. Eagles, bears, and orcas feast on salmon, a fish that is prized by many West Coast animals. Here are those salmon. One, two. Salmon begin their life inland in streams and rivers and make their way out to the ocean when they're big enough. They spend most of their life out in the deep ocean just like this, but eventually they make their way back inland. And they are very tasty to a lot of different animals. I have eaten some salmon in my lifetime. Maybe you have too. If you do, you share a snack with eagles, bears, orcas, and lots of other West Coast animals. I see a much bigger animal in the background here. Do you see it? These are gray whales. G is for gray whales that swim a long way. Every spring, these gentle giants travel from the warm waters of Mexico to lush feeding grounds in the Arctic. So these amazing gray whales are one of the animals that can be seen from everywhere on the west coast of North America. They spend their life traveling up and down the coast off the shore of the ocean. Amazing. We're back on land, back in the forest. I see something tasty. H is for huckleberries that brighten up the rainforest. Sweet red berries are a summer treat for bears and birds. They gobble up these forest fruits. These berries do look mighty tasty. Do you have a favorite berry that you like to eat? I really like to eat blueberries. I'm noticing in our chat that Miss Amador's class has learned about P41, uh, the famous Hollywood sign cougar that lives in the Verdugo Mountains. That's absolutely right, Miss Amador's class. We have lots of cougars that live right here in the Los Angeles area up in the mountains here. And scientists take care of them and study them because we are trying to make sure that they can live healthy and safe alongside all of us. I'm so glad you guys know about that. Great example of a West Coast animal. Looks like we're back under the water again. I is for invertebrates that live in the sand and the sea. The ochre sea star is an invertebrate, an animal without a backbone. So they don't have a skeleton, a backbone inside. We do. Can you reach around and feel the bumps on your back, on your spine? Each one of those bumps is a vertebra which means that we are vertebrates. We have a backbone. Lots of other animals don't have backbones. Let's see what's next. J is for jellies that shimmer and shift in the ocean currents. If they are jostled, these graceful creatures will glow in the dark. Do you think that jellies are vertebrates or invertebrates? Do you see a backbone? I don't see a backbone. These are invertebrates. K is for kelp that washes up on shore. 
The thick kelp forests grow underwater, providing a home for many young fish and other sea life. This kelp is so beautiful. And underwater plants? They form forests under the ocean that lots of animals like to live in. Maybe if you visited a West Coast beach, you've seen some of this washed up on shore. Very shiny, lots of really interesting shapes. L is for limpets that cling to the rocks. Each small snail has a pointy shell and a strong foot that grabs on tight. Sea stars and birds devour them. So these little animals hold on tight to the rocks and have shells for protection, but they are still a favorite food for many West Coast animals. This looks a little bit in the water and on land. M is for marbled merlets that nest in the mossy branches of a tall rainforest tree. Every day, the parent birds fly to the ocean to catch fish for their babies. I see the parent birds in the ocean going fishing. Do you see the baby merlet? There it is, up in the mossy nest. That looks really cozy. N is for newborn. A black-tailed deer seeing its first spring. A fawn's spotted coat blends in with the light and shadows of the forest and helps the new baby hide. It's getting to be springtime all around the northern hemisphere right now. So there are lots of baby animals being born like this newborn deer. And I love that these spots on its coat help it blend in with all of the little spots that you see of light around the forest. What a good way to camouflage. O is for orcas that leap and dive in the west coast waves. Orcas travel together in a family group called pods. Watch the young ones play. They're jumping and playing. They swim together in those family groups to keep safe and to hunt really efficiently. P is for Pacific Ocean the biggest ocean in the world. Its waters teem with life. Listen to the roar of the great waves. Feel the mist on your face. I love this illustration because it helps me to imagine that. I can close my eyes and I can imagine hearing the waves roaring and crashing. And I can really imagine the mist being blown in the wind onto my face from these waves. Q is for quillback rockfish that swim near rocky reefs and live up to a hundred years. A hundred year old fish, oh my goodness. These fish have sharp quills for stinging seals and other enemies. So these fish have a defense. They have those sharp quills on their back that they can use to defend themselves from something that might want to eat them. R is for rain that showers the coast and gives life to the forest and all of its creatures. More than 10 feet or three meters of rain falls in a year. And I think they mean here in the rainforests that you find mostly in the northern parts of the west coast. Here in Southern California and down into the west coast of Mexico, it's a little bit drier and a little bit hotter. So we might not have 10 feet of rain per year, but we do still get rain. Everything needs water, right? We just had a pretty rainy day a couple days ago here in Los Angeles. I was so glad for all of the plants and animals here to get a drink. S is for sandpipers that flock on the beach. Every spring, these tiny birds rest and feed on the mud flats before they fly north to have their babies. These sandpipers can be found all along the beaches of the West Coast in the spring. They skitter all across the sand and dip their beaks down into the sand to find little pieces of food. They play chicken with the waves. Maybe you've done that before. Running in when the waves go out, running out when the waves come in. <laughs> T is for tides that rise and fall endlessly. At high tide, water washes over the sand. At low tide, beachcombers find tide pools full of colorful sea anemones. The place where the water touches the land constantly ebbs in and out, in and out. 
And a lot of that has to do with our moon. Isn't that incredible? There's a lot to understand about tides, but the basics are that when they come out, they leave little pockets of water behind and a lot of exposed land where creatures like these sandpipers and even humans who are curious and want to just look for ocean treasures can walk around and look for those. Do you see the colorful anemones in this tide pool? I wonder how many there are. Do you think we can count them together? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I see nine anemones. I'm looking in our chat and I'm seeing some more great comments from Miss Amador's class. We went to the Aquarium of the Pacific to learn about invertebrates and jellyfish. That's so fun. And we had lots of raining days this week. That is true. I think there was more than one rainy day this week. <laughs> it's good. Lots of rain is a good thing. U is for urchins that creep along the rocky ocean floor. A sea urchin has a spiky body like a porcupine. Sea urchins are a favorite sea otter snack. Do we see these big spiky urchins? They're little animals inside. They're soft and they're capable of moving and scooting around. But these big furry animals, these sea otters, love to pick them up off the floor and crunch on them for a snack. This one's diving down to find one to eat. This one's floating on its back while it's enjoying a snack. <laughs> what are these? V is for Villela Villela, or by the wind sailors that drift in the waves. Like little blue sailboats, they float on the water and catch the wind with their sails. Here's another really cool invertebrate. Not quite jellyfish, but very similar. That float on the waves and float around finding things to eat. I'm seeing Kika sharing that Tory Pines Rock on the Beach has those. Very cool. They, I love exploring different coastlines. Do we recognize this animal? I see wolves. Can you make a wolf sound with me? Can we howl? Awoo! <laughs> w is for wolves that swim in the ocean and roam in the rainforest. Coastal wolves fish for salmon, dig for clams, and eat mussels and barnacles on the beach. I have never seen a wolf on the beach. That is so incredible. It makes sense that if a wolf lives on the coast, they make advantage they take advantage of all the food that lives on the coast. So I guess coastal wolves eat seafood. That sounds pretty tasty. Other wolves that live further inland probably don't have the option to eat a lot of things that you find on a beach. But that's a good that they're adaptable and they eat whatever they can find. X is for Ziphister, a prickleback fish that swishes through tide pools and hides under rocks. This fish breathes air. Whoa, that is really cool. A fish that breathes air? Fish breathe oxygen, but they usually breathe it through the water. But this one can breathe it out in the air. It's amazing. Y is for yellow the color of the sun on a hot summer day. The bright sun shines down on the coast, giving light and warmth to all living things. Do you see that bright yellow sun up there? We made it all the way to Z, everybody. Our last letter is Z is for zone, the intertidal zone where land and sea meet. Every day, tides ebb and flow across the zone, revealing more ocean treasures for you to discover. The intertidal zone is this whole area where that tide goes out and comes in and goes out and comes in. I see a couple of people. We can pretend that's us. I see some of us exploring where the land has been exposed because that tide has come all the way back out and we're looking for some nature treasures in those tide pools. 
But we better hurry up because pretty soon that tide will come all the way back in and cover that intertidal zone back up. Thank you for exploring the West Coast with me today through our nature alphabet. I had so much fun and I was really enjoying reading some of your comments about some of the things that you've seen in this book. I was thinking to myself how fun it is to organize things by letters. And I thought maybe it would be fun for anyone watching wherever you live to think about what kind of a nature alphabet you could make where you live. Maybe it could even be a culture alphabet, some things that you see in your neighborhood, some foods you enjoy, some things that you do where you live, some games you like to play, some things that you see when you look around. Maybe you can try and make an alphabet for your neighborhood, picking things that are represented by each letter of the alphabet. I think I'm going to try that out today. I hope that whatever you do with the rest of your day, you have a wonderful one. And we will see you again next Friday at 11 a.m. for NHMLA's Storytime Live. I had so much fun. Have a fantastic day, everybody.